Welcome back to the final evening of TCM's Summer of Darkness. I'm Eddie Muller, known in the bad parts of town as the Czar of Noir, and it's been my pleasure the past several weeks to present this amazing smorgasbord of sinister cinema. With the next film in tonight's lineup, Brute Force, things only get more intense. At the time of its release, this was unquestionably the most violent film Hollywood had ever produced. To this day, certain scenes remain shocking and disturbing. Like the previous film in tonight's lineup, Criss Cross, it was the brainchild of producer Mark Hellinger, and its genesis tells you something about the type of guy Hellinger was. After he came to Hollywood, the producer received a letter from a former newspaper man, Bob Patterson, a colleague from Hellinger's days in New York, who was now serving time in a Louisiana penitentiary on a check-forging conviction. Hellinger, hot as a pistol in Hollywood, thought nothing of it until several years later Patterson, now a free man, showed up at his office door. Hellinger offered a handout, which Patterson refused, insisting that he wanted work, not charity. So the producer set him up in a tiny office and put him on the payroll until he had earned what Hellinger first offered as a handout. Weeks later, Patterson walked into Hellinger's office and dropped a bunch of pages on the desk. It ended up being brute force. The finished script is by Richard Brooks, who along with John Huston had written uncredited Hellinger's 1946 hit, The Killers. Brooks and director Jules Dassin folded a political subtext into the story of cellmates plotting their escape from a maximum security prison, thereby turning a prison break potboiler into an existential parable about men suffering under fascist regimes. The casting call apparently netted every last nail-spitting, hard-ass tough guy in Hollywood, making Brute Force the most testosterone-fueled film of its time. Years later, Jules Dassin would express reservations about the film's simplistic philosophy and storytelling, but there is absolutely no doubting the ferocious commitment he brought to bear on this project. In my estimation, it still stands as the best Men Behind Bars movie ever made. From 1947, brace yourself for brute force.